Hi, my name is Lance Moore and I'm a real estate agent in Tampa. I've been an investor for years. Jeez, I can't even remember. Since the 90s when I had a home in California and I ended up moving. So I'm doing this video right here. I actually was going to do a webinar. I decided not to. I was going to do an ebook and sell it, but I just don't want to spend the time doing that. So I'm going to do sort of a freebie to help people. If you're going to rent out your home, I'm going to show you how to rent it out without using a real estate agent. And let me just say this. I know a lot of realtors and property managers would be ticked off if they heard me say this, but it's really true. The MLS was never designed for the rental market, period. It never was designed for the rental market. It was always designed for home sales. Now, there are certain areas that you know you can use realtors and they provide a good benefit, not in Tampa. The real estate agents in Tampa in the rental market that I've seen, the vast majority of them, when I say the vast majority, I'm talking 90, 95% of them are absolutely useless. So I'm going to go over this video and you're going to see why so many of them are so useless and what they're doing that you have no idea what's going on. And I've rented properties out just a little bit about me. I've owned properties in California, I've owned properties in Texas, up in North Florida, I own some here in Tampa, and I pretty much could rent them out myself without using a realtor within a matter of a week at a fair market value, and I don't need to use the multiple listing service. Matter of fact, I could use it for free, and I never do. If there's just easier ways, because the multiple listing service wasn't really intended for rentals. It was intended for home sales, and a lot of agents do and did and are currently doing rentals is nothing more to help a client out. So um, enjoy this, and I think this is going to save you a lot of time, headache. It doesn't make any difference where you are, and I would just say take all this with a grain of salt. Okay, here we go. All right, this is Lance. I'm going to try to keep this short right here. I'm in the multiple listing service, and I'm telling you the reason why I, as a real estate agent, when I have my own rental properties, I don't use the multiple listing service. I personally think it's a waste, and it's a waste. I'll show you why. Here, I'm doing a search. I'm active homes. These are rentals. This is my rental, so these are rentals. In New Tampa, 14 to 1,800 square feet. Let's just go over the details. So we'll go over the details, and here's the problem. The agents just aren't paying real estate agents enough money to make the squeeze worth the juice. In other words, the agents are getting in their car, and in the, in, in the MLS and the sales, you pay the co-broker 50%. And our, our, um, we used to not have to disclose that to the consumers, but then you just had a lot of what I call real unethical and dishonest realtors. So now it's disclosed when you're signing a listing agreement to sell. But look what's happening here. For, so the agent's paying $1,400. Okay, sh they should be co-brokering seven. They're co-brokering less than half of that, three. We'll pick another one. 1495 Co-brokering two hundred dollars. Um, this one right here, sixteen seventy-five. Co-brokering two hundred dollars. This one right here, um, seventeen ninety-five. Co-brokering three hundred dollars. Okay, an agent's going to get someone in their car. But hopefully they're going to rent. But they're going to get someone in their car. They're going to drive around all day or maybe a couple days. And they're going to get paid $300. And they're going to work for a company, let's just say like Coldwell Bank or Prudential. Nothing wrong with those companies. But if they're doing rental properties, let's face it, they're not a producer. Um, so they're probably on a 50-50 split plus, the, plus a 6% royalty. So the company's taken 56%. And the agent's left for 40, 44%. And then the agent has to pay taxes on the money. And then they have to pay for any expenses, gas and everything else. I mean, you can see it's just, you know, they're not paying 50, 50 percent. So I just find that most of them, um, most of these rental properties just sit on here forever. Now, this has to do with rent, not property management. Don't get me wrong. And there's a lot of good agents. But you just, it's important if you're going to use a real estate agent, make sure you have it in writing what they're co-brokering to the other agent. Okay? Um, so anyhow, but here's what I do. 
I don't use the MLS. First thing I do is I go to a company called Postlets. Now, I think they just got bought out by Zillow, which is sort of a bummer because like any corporation, they'll destroy the company. And Postlets has gone downhill a little bit since they got taken over. It's either Zillow or Trulia. So what I do, here's Postlets. Just go to postlets.com. You, you'll need to set up an account. So as you can see, I'll just go in my, my account example for a couple of my rental properties. So I'm logged in. So let me just, um, you know, here's some of my rentals. You can see it's been a long time since I've done anything on it. So if I if I went in to edit, now these are all expired. They're not activated, so I don't want to activate them. Um, but as you can see right here, you could do the location, contact, basic details. You could add, I think, up to 12 photos or something. You could do a description. You could review what the postlet's going to look like, and they look really nice. You go over to promote postlet, so it's really nice. So when you when you um, put out a postlet, check it out. It automatically goes to um, it automatically goes to Zillow, um, front door, back page, Oodle. Hot pads, by owner MLS, um, Trulia, Yahoo. Look at all these free marketing. It goes to other ones. It syndicates it. So these are the syndication partners. They'll also give you a URL. So if you want to take this URL and put it in Craigslist, of course, if you don't, we'll get into Craigslist in a little bit. In a little bit, you could promote it on your Facebook and Twitter. So it gives a lot of really good, a lot of really good ways. So I use this. This is great, and and, and the postlets they look really nice. Um, so the other thing I do is I do Craigslist. You'll go in, and, and you can see you'll just you know you'll again I just you can just go into my account um, or create account if you're not pick the area. I'm in Tampa, so you pick the area, and then when you're marketing, you either say you're for sale, you know, you're either buy owner or a broker. Now, I'll give you a couple tips on Craigslist when you're doing it. Um, first off, you put a picture in it. Put a nice description in the property that stands out, you know, either asterisk, 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 and all capitals or something so it stands out. Put a picture in it, at least one picture. You don't need to do a ton of pictures. Personally, I just, you know, put the URL. But in Craigslist, they don't make the, they don't really have the HTML coding, if you know what that is. If you don't, don't worry about it. If you want to go to a website in Craigslist now, you can't just click it. You have to copy and, and paste it and put it into the URL. So this this right this right here, if this is in Craigslist, you can't just click on it. You have to copy it. You know, you have to you know copy it. Go up here and copy and then paste. So. Um, so it's sort of a bummer. But here's the trick about Craigslist, what a lot of people don't know about Craigslist. If you're going to do Craigslist, you need to do it methodically. And here's what I mean. Craigslist does not allow duplicate content. And they're going to, they're going to flag you. And it's called ghosting. You're going to get ghosted and you're not going to know it. Because you're going to think your ad's up. And, and what I mean is this. You go in Monday morning and you do an ad. You put it in Craigslist. You get up Tuesday morning and you take that same ad and you put it in Craigslist again. You get up Wednesday morning, you take that same ad and you put it in Craigslist again. Well, you're not going to get credit for ad number two or three because they're duplicate content and they're going to ghost you. So in other words, you think you're live. They're going to send you a link that you're live, but you're not going to be able to find that ad anywhere. So what you need to do, like when I do Craigslist, what I'll do is I'll do a rotation. I'll usually do morning to evening. Sometimes I may do three times a day. So example, Monday morning, I try to get in an early before people go to work. So it's in the early edition. So let's say I do seven o'clock in the morning. I post an ad in Craigslist at seven o'clock. I take a different ad and it, and it, at seven o'clock or six o'clock at night, I post another one. When I post that ad, I remove the first ad. Um, and then I get up the next morning and I put my third ad in. And then when I put my third ad in on Tuesday morning at 7, I remove my second ad that I put in last night. And then I keep on jumping back and forth. Because Craigslist, and this is more of a guideline than the rule I found, they, you're not supposed to have duplicate content, but they want it, they usually do a hold for say two, for 24 hours. So in other words, they don't want to do, if, even if you, you can't remove it, 
and then a couple hours later stick it in again they'll ghost you um, they're they're pretty smart yeah I mean you always have to figure out you know and I, I've learned Craigslist is smarter than I am Google's smarter than I am so um, you know you just have to keep that in mind now Craigslist could generate you a lot of clientele you know information and leads people want to see your home but in my opinion they're not always the best you know postlets won't get you near as many Craigslist will probably get you quite a few but they're not always the best but you know don't don't you know say no we don't want to do that and and um the one I tend to use that I like the best of them all is rentals.com now this will cost you money it could cost you I think I don't know, fifty to a hundred dollars or hundred and ten, but it works. And the people you get on rentals.com are higher quality. So in other words, you're not going to get as many as Craigslist, but you're going to get a better clientele than Craigslist. But don't discard Craigslist because it's hugely popular. Also be careful about scams going out there. I've had people doing scams on some of my okay. So that's what now you got all everything squared away and you're ready to go. Okay, now what do you do? All right, depends on two things. Is the property vacant? If the property is vacant, what I would do is I would well, I'm going to tell you what I do. I don't, you could do whatever you want, but what I what I'll do is if the property is vacant, I'm not going to run over there every time someone wants to see it. For Pete's sakes, these are people who are looking to rent, and a couple tips on renting. If you're going to rent out the property, make sure the property looks really, really nice. If you need to paint, if you need to clean the carpet, if you need to pull all the weeds and put in fresh mulch or put in sod, do it. Because renters are sick and tired of these scum lords that just rent a bunch of junk out. And it doesn't take that much money. Anytime a tenant moves out of one of my properties, I always rekey it because you have to by Florida law. I always um, will clean the carpets. I'll always get a professional carpet cleaner in there. I'll always get a professional maid service in there if I need to touch up the paint or do whatever I do. But it really doesn't cost that much, you know. Um, so do that. So if you're renting it out, I would just say, hey, look, I'm I'm doing um, an open house. I'm going to be showing it Saturday from two o'clock to four o'clock. So if you could make it. Please show up and, you know, and then I have a bunch of applications with me. And I have some people that say, no, I can't make on um, Saturday 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. And I'll say, okay, well, if I don't get it rented out, then I'll let you know when you could see, you know, when you could see it. And, you know, they'll, a lot of times you get a, if they're looking for a place to live, they'll figure out a way. They'll take off of work or they'll work it in their schedule. I don't really go out of my way too much because... I price my home competitively when I rent it. I don't try to get every nickel. I mean, think of it this way. If I'm renting something for $1,500 and I don't, and I want to get every nickel and it takes two months to rent it, I just lost $3,000. So wouldn't it behoove me to maybe rent it for $1,400 or even $1,395 and have it rented out within a matter of a couple days or a couple weeks? That's my opinion. So anyhow, so um, I'll go ahead and do that. Now, here's a beauty. I love it when tenants are in the property. Tenants are the best because they'll do all the work for you if you know how to schedule it right with them. So what I do is I call up the tenant and I say, hey, we have a couple choices um, that we could do. I'm thinking I, I need to lease my place out, so I'm going to give you the option. I could go ahead and hire a real estate agent if you want, but they're going to be trucking through your home day or night. Whenever there's a buyer, we're going to put an electronic lock box on the door and they may come in at 9 o'clock in the morning or they may come in at 6, six or 7 o'clock at night when you're eating dinner. I don't want to disrupt you and your family. So the other option I have is if you want, I'll do the, I'll do the marketing and the advertising. Anytime someone calls me up to look at the home, I'll ask them to drive by the home to make sure they like the home and they like the neighborhood. And then, and then I tell them to call me back. When they call me back, if they want to see the home, then I'll give them your name and number and you could schedule a time that's convenient for you and your family to show them the property. How does that sound? 
They love it. Never had a tenant not do that. Not only that, they're thrilled that you're so considerate with them. And they're going to do all the showings with you. Now, the reason why you want to have them drive past the home and the neighborhood is, number one, because the first thing that comes out of it, Every tenant's mouth, when they talk to you about rental, Hi, I'm calling about the property for rent. When can I see it? <laughs> I don't even know the area. I've even had people say, Oh, well, I, example, I have properties in, in, um, in um, Panther Trace in Riverview. They'll say, Oh, I know where Panther Trace is. I'm like, Okay, but I'm going to give you the address. I still need you to run you know, drive past the property, make sure you like the property, make sure you like the the um, the area, and then give me a call back because I don't want to disrupt my rental, my tenant, every time someone wants to look at the property. It, does that sound fair? What are they going to say? So they say yes. If they never call me back, they were never a bona fide, you know, rental renter as it is. Quite frankly, probably only 30 three percent of them even call back which is great for me if they're not interested I don't want to be bugged nor do I want to bug the tenant and if they want to be you know if they want to rent it they'll drive by it's as simple as that so I think every blue moon you get someone who says they drove by and they did but most people do um, so I think most people are pretty honest about that and they'll drive by and the tenant will you know, the tenant will obviously um, filter them I send the tenant the applications, and I, I'll, I'll email them an application. I'll say, "Can you print out about eight of these?" And if the if the um, if they want an application, just give the application to them. By the way, the the application you can actually put the application if you do rentals on rentals.com. There's a little place where you can upload a PDF. So it's really great. That's all you need to do. And, you know, I, I never list my homes in the MLS. I always have the tenants do that. And then I just always give them a choice. And they always say, hey, I would, I would um, love for you to do that. I don't want to be bugged. And then sometimes if, if they're getting a lot of um, showings, I'll tell them, I'll say, hey, look, why don't you just tell them you're going to show it on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or on the weekend so you're not getting bombarded every night. But generally, if it's conditioned nice, if it's priced right, if you have good pictures in, if you do what you're supposed to be doing marketing-wise, it'll rent out very quickly. I never have a problem. I usually have a line to rent out my rentals um, because they're in good condition. I do what I need to do. It looks good. They rent out quick, and my tenants are very happy with me. Um, now, I'll, I'll give you... The final tip, one of the things, I always figure out where the market rent is. If the fair market rent is $1,500, I'll price it at, or in some cases, a little lower than that. And then when I'm talking to the tenant, I'll be blunt. I'll say, no, you know this is, this is a little under rental value. The reason why I did, and if they argue with me, I'll just say, okay, well, you know, I know it is, and you know it is. You you rented it out, and I'll tell them. I'll say the reason why I have it a little under value on the rent is because I want a good tenant. I don't want someone busting my chops, you know, on everything. I don't want you calling me all the time. If you have a legitimate problem or complaint, then by all means, give me a call. But I expect you, you know, if there's little things. I expect you to take care of them. I expect you to mow the lawn, to, to, to take care of the to the grass. You know, I expect the rent to be there on time, etc. Most of them understand that. I mean, you have to set the guidelines up front. So hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to give me a call. All right. So anyhow, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call. This is my business card um, with my name, my cell phone number, or email address, my website, Tampa to Enjoy. Um, if, if you're looking at buying or you know anybody that's looking at buying, definitely, um, you know, pass pass on my information. Like my like my um, you like my Facebook page, which is on my website. Check it out. And if you know anybody renting, just for this video, I mean, I again, I wasn't going to charge people for all this because this is, I mean, it's really some of the most valuable information I've ever given away for free, but I, I really just don't have time to be doing ebooks or, or dealing with all that stuff. So I don't know, maybe I will in the future. Anyhow, as of right now, you got this free, so I wish you the best of luck with it and um, have, good luck. Take care.